morning. If you've been watching my stuff for a while, you kind of know that I, I enjoy doing things the old way. I trap and try to make a little bit of money off the land and, you know, get firewood and whatever. We raise our own chickens and turkeys and things. Um, we have these chickens here. They're going to have a bad day. We're, today is butcher day. Um, these turkeys, they've got a little while yet, but at least one or two of them will go. And that white cow keeps jumping the fence. So she'll be in the freezer before too long, too. But these guys, Cindy says it's ready, so I guess it's time to do them. This is the scalding water. It needs to be 148 to 150. So we're just a little over 150. I'll turn this down some. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you this story. When me and Cindy first started raising turkeys, we lived over in Washington State and we had a a long hillside that was our driveway and never raised turkeys before and we went to butcher them and I got a block of wood and I couldn't find my hatchet and so I uh, looked around and I found a, a machete and I thought well this ought to work and so <laughs> grabbed the turkey by his back legs and it put his head on the chopping block and it was doing this with its head and looked like that and wouldn't hold still. I went to swing and I grazed him and it kicked loose and took off down that long driveway and <laughs> so here I am chasing this thing down the hillside and I got a machete and I'm I finally tackled it and I'm whack 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 and Looked down on the road below us, and cars were stopped and watching me, and none of the neighbors would talk to us for some reason after that. So after the turkey deal, I just blow off their head with the 22. It, uh, it's quick and clean and a whole lot easier. <laughs> they don't get away. I won't show that part. YouTube is squeamish. So what you do is you dunk them in the scalding water a couple of times. And get the get them good and hot. Then we have a homemade chicken plucker here that last time I showed <laughs> kind of messy. Um, last time I showed this, YouTube didn't like that at all. That gets most of them off, and uh, 
there's still a few left the wing feathers and tail feathers and things are a little harder to come off but gets most of them and then um, we just do the rest by hand but it doesn't take us that long we got 20 to do today but um, what do you think a couple hours probably yeah maybe yeah, about two yeah hours. it probably probably take, covered with feathers again. you're covered in feathers you got feathers in your hair already mm. my little Indian <laughs> <laughs> got feathers on your shoulder so yeah that uh, that thing does throw the feathers the dogs like the feathers though so I guess they're gonna be happy I usually do about two or three at a time and then uh, throw them in cold water while we do the rest of them and that cools the meat down and it takes a while but it ain't too bad they taste good can I pull these off? yeah Get you. Okay, spin him around a little bit. I guess we got most of those. <laughs> that was good. Look at this one. Look at that. It almost looks like. Some folks might not understand, but look at all this meat we got. And that's only half of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we gave um, half to a friend that bought some chicks. This is all boneless meat off of a turkey that we had. It was really old, otherwise we would have done it normally. We're going to make that into turkey burger. And these little guys, they're really old chickens that quit laying. So they'll be soup and stew this year, this winter. But yeah, that's a lot of meat. I bet there's over a hundred pounds here. The freezer is filling up between the deer that Cindy shot and the chickens that we raise. <laughs> I'm not really sure where we're going to put this cow. I have another freezer or two, but it's they're full too, mostly with bear bait and beaver tails. <laughs> Need to get them cleaned out and get that stuff out of there. But, uh, you know, I think it's important for people especially kids nowadays to realize just where it is that their food comes from you know something something gave its life so that you can live it didn't probably do it voluntarily you took it or you hired somebody to take it in other words you hired a hitman if you buy it from the grocery store and to waste that food and throw it away just because you're full or don't like the way it tastes or whatever to me that's really wrong you know I mean you're not gonna bring that critter back so you might as well use it whether if you don't like the way it tastes then uh, find a way to make it edible but anyway that's just me why do we do this uh, savings and money 
I don't think really amounts to much. In fact, in some ways, I think we might end up paying more. Because the, you got to buy the chicken chicks. We have had chickens that have hatched them out. Uh, but if they don't, you got to buy the chicken chicks. Then you got to feed them until it's time to butcher them. And then you got the, exp the time and effort it takes to butcher them. So, I don't know. I mean, in the grocery store, the prices are pretty high. But the, the cost of raising them really isn't that cheap either, unless you have access to a lot of grain and things. If you have to buy sack food, it adds up pretty quick. But uh, we like the, the feeling of being at least a little bit self-sufficient. We're really not, though, because we still have to buy the grain. If you don't have to buy the grain, you have to buy the chicken. So... I don't know that we're really coming out that much ahead. The grocery stores are a lot easier. You just go and pick them up. And they're already uh, cut and wrapped and butchered and nothing to do but unwrap them and throw them in the cook pot. But at the same time, especially nowadays, I think people are starting to realize that grocery stores have always been stocked is in our lifetimes maybe not during world war ii but uh, that doesn't mean that can't change there's always things that happen where they're talking about a diesel shortage now uh, this coronavirus i think woke up a lot of people and you know it, it's it's no guarantee that there's food in the grocery store anything that we can raise ourselves or get off of the the wild game or uh wild plants and things we do that and we've done it for many many years this really isn't nothing new to us but uh, anyway it's it's kind of fun too it gives you a feeling of self-worth even though i really don't like having to do it do in the chickens or other animals and all that but for something to live something else has to die i mean even the vegetarian that only eats plants you know if you pick a apple the tree doesn't die but that apple dies leaf of lettuce same deal it dies you have to you have to kill to survive none of us can live without doing that and that's the bottom line really like it or not so thank you for watching and we'll see you next time